going on, everybody? This is Clay from Tales of the Blade, and we are back with another episode of Gaming Nation presented to you by Fandoms Anonymous. Tonight, we are talking about an amazing game, apparently. I haven't played it yet, but we have someone who here who has, and uh, it's, it just came out this week. It's 2K, NBA 2K18. Apparently, this game has just been amazing, but I'm not going to sit here and try to hype it up because I got my man, Dan d bras, what's going on, man? Well, they call me the hype man, folks, because we go crazy around these parts when 2K comes out, okay? I have logged in. I've had this game for about 24 hours. I already logged in like seven hours of gameplay, and I worked a double today, folks. Let's go. 2K is popping. Let's talk about it. Back to you, brother. We also got my man Daryl and Mr. Inferno himself. What's going on, my dude? Man, what's up, guys? Now, I don't know too much about 2K18. I've only played 16, but it should be a good one. Absolutely, absolutely. So here we go, guys. Let's talk about this. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about the three different editions that came out with this game. Dan, break that down for us. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So there are three different editions to this game. We have... The $60 version, the regular version, which most people are going to buy, folks. And then our next step up there, we have the Legend ed- Edition. So the original version for 60 bucks is just a normal game. You don't really get any uh, bonus content unless you pre-ordered it uh, and ahead of time got the pre-season code pass or whatever it's called, popped it in there and got something. But now we're on to the Legend Edition. And this actually comes with a couple upgrades that are pretty cool. You get um, a 1,000 virtual credits, 20 My Team packs so you can build your fantasy team, Shaq Attack shoes, a rookie Shaq jersey, Shaq official logo shirt, a Shaq, another Shaq jersey, and a Shaq championship ring. So you get a little bit of swag to rock around when, when you're playing NBA. And then for 150 bucks, me personally, I'm not, I'm not paying this 150 bucks, but I know people out there that want to build their fantasy teams. And if you do, you're going to get 250,000 virtual credits, 40 my team packs to build the ultimate team. You're going to get everybody, and then you get all of the Shaq official stuff, and plus a Mitchell and Ness Shaq jersey collection. So it sounds pretty awesome. Um, it might not really be for me for that amount of money, just for some extra, you know, swag and jerseys and stuff, but definitely for the super diehard fans that are on there all the time, uh, this is a pretty cool package, and with the game, you get Shaquille O'Neal on the cover. I'm going to ask you something. It seems like the game is really scratching check. I mean, what's up with that? S- stretching check? Yeah, I mean, everything's about Shaq. I mean, so why is it surrounded by Shaq? Um, well, I think they took a few years off from Shaq, actually, because the Legend Edition has Shaq, and I think with the um, last year, the Legend Edition was Kobe. I do agree that the Lakers are kind of getting all the hype because they are the market brand, and so last two years, the Legend Editions have Shaq and Kobe, but this year in the regular edition, it's Kyrie Irving. And it's funny we talk about that because when you go out and buy the regular edition, it's Kyrie Irving in the Cavaliers jersey, and if you know any, like if you follow the NBA, you you know that Kyrie Irving got traded about three weeks ago to the Celtics. So with the cover being the Cavaliers, when you pop in the game though, Kyrie with the Celtics jersey comes up. So I do think that that's kind of funny. Um, but back to your point, bro, I do think that. They are pushing the big markets, and you got to push your big names. And I think Shaq's going to get the love this year. Um, he is definitely one of the greats. He's he's the biggest man to ever dominate the game. So I I, I see him getting it. And next year, I mean, they melt Michael Jordan on the on the cover for like three years. I mean, <laughs> you feel me there, bud? 
So you think every year they're going to switch it up, you know? They may oh, have, yeah, yeah. Um, the way it's looking, I think they are going to switch it up because they, they had Michael Jordan doing this thing for a few years, and then every year after that they, they did change it, including the Legend Editions. Because last year it was Kobe with the Legend Edition and Paul George on the cover. So I think the way they're doing it is they're going to uh, – the Legend Edition is going to feature a legend. Let me ask you one more thing, okay? So you think it's worth it, these virtual points or these credits, by getting, like, the Legend Edition or, you know, the, um, other than the Standard Edition? You think these other editions Okay, so, the, yep, go, go ahead. Um, I think that, honestly, it's all up to you. It depends, like, if you want to put some time in and you actually, like, you put in the work and you earn, you, you earn the virtual credits, then, I mean... I'd rather do that because then, you know, I don't have to pay the extra money that I've shown I put some work in. If you want to get an an early start, though, because with these virtual credits, you can can upgrade your guy to, like, you you can make a my career and have him start out at, like, an 88 or a 90. You you know what I'm saying? So, like, but I'm more in the – the inorganic progression approach. I'd rather just play the game and learn it and, you know, like – I, I, I played a season on 2K17, a, a career guy, and I love the storyline, by the way. I played it and played it for like four or five seasons, and that's just one of those games where you feel that you got to keep playing and playing. 2K17, it just, it, 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 I was in love with it. Well, I'm, but coming from me, I mean, I'm an MMO player. But come for me, okay. what you just said, that sounds like a pay to win. Do you think that is is that? Kind of, okay. Kind of, you saying if I if I buy this legend edition, I get more virtual credits to upgrade my character. You know, and us MMO pro, MMO players, when you do something like that, we call that a pay to win and we don't like that. So you feel like yeah, it's yeah. a pay to win? Well yeah, I definitely that there are there are certain things where it is play to win in everything these days, you know, with the, with DLC, extra armor and games and guns and everything that you, you can think of. And I think this is just their ploy for, for the extra people, you know, that, that have the money and are 2K heads. It's, it's a way to kind of make money off that and give them an upgrade. You know, you not only get you, – you just don't get the upgrade, but you get – you get Shaq on the cover, you know? And it's one of those things that where, like, Shaq's probably not going to be in the cover on 2K for a long time. You know, it, it, it's kind of that special addition for the fans. Okay. I mean, yeah, and I could sit here and talk about uh, DLC all day and pay to win because I'm with Daryl on that one. I've seen it too many times where you get that one, like, like weapon or something that someone paid big money for and it just dominates. Like, right now in Destiny, we got uh, the cold heart. It's kind of nasty. But, um, but that was a pretty exactly. one. So, yeah, I could go on about that all day. But we're going to move on from that a little bit because that's a, that's a very elongated topic. Maybe we'll do a whole episode on that at some point. Um, uh, uh... <laughs> let's look at the uh, let's look at the gameplay, Dan. Tell us a little about that. Okay, the gameplay, folks, is definitely a lot faster than the old few games, especially sixteen and seventeen. Um, the running the ball of the offense a lot faster. The defense is a lot faster, and the the shot meter. Um, if you played the last few years, it was like under the players feet almost and uh this year it is actually like on the left side of their head um so a when you're when you're shooting you got to look right there and you got to time it with exactly their the um at the peak of their shot as you will with the jump shot and uh i think that this is actually a better play it feels way more realistic it is a little bit harder to shoot the ball but that's kind of the 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 nba it's becoming a a three-point game but with those players you get your shot you're hitting them all day but it is a little bit harder it's not like the past few games you could just pick it up with almost anybody and if if you're open you're going to make the three you actually have to be a real shooter to shoot the ball, and um, I I loved it. I thought the gameplay was uh, even a little bit better than last year because 
I don't know what they did if they put another filter on it, but the 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 colors they used and the the way that the color correction with the game it looks so good. Like when I'm standing, you know, ten fifteen feet back from from my couch, it almost looks like I'm watching a game like fully. You can barely tell. It's it, it's pretty awesome. I love it. Yeah, I have noticed the graphics on the game look amazing. I mean, I remember one time coming to the house and all my cousins were playing the game, and I actually thought they was watching a real basketball game. <laughs> So, yeah, the graphics are amazing on 2K. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I heard a, a lot of, like, uh, different things about this particular game in terms of the gameplay. Like, what – and but it, it's it's confusing to me mainly because I haven't played – I really haven't played a sports game since NBA Jam on the Sega Genesis. Represent. Um, but what's what's been, like, big about this one? What's really been innovative about this particular game? Okay, okay. I like that. Um, what's really innovative about this game is – Unlike the last few years, you know, that they like to give you a different storyline. This storyline is a very different storyline that gives you, like, okay, so the last, the last couple years, you, you go to college, you play for a team, and you actually get, uh, you get drafted this year, and we'll get more into it in a minute, but this year, you're not even on a team. You're you're just trying to get in. You go to this big NBA party, and you're just trying to get your foot in the door. I thought that it kind of it it hits you from a different side of you know not the like when you think about first round picks, those are kind of the chosen ones in the NBA, the ones that you know you 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 look at and you can just tell when they get on the court they're going to be NBA stars. Now the rest of them are people that got to keep working hard every single day, like like me and you guys, and keep grinding and grinding and grinding. And I really like that they came up with that idea of how they were going to do that. Um, another thing that I really think is the the icebreaker to me all day is the all NBA teams they have this year. Um, I think they call them the all legend teams, and they are amazing. Um, so the last few years you could go and, like, you could play with, like uh, – the 96 Bulls, you know, the last few years. But th- this is the first year that you can do all NBA teams. So, like, you, let's say we're talking about the Los Angeles Lakers, okay? We're going to bring up Magic Johnson, Kobe Bryant, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Sha- Shaquille O'Neal. The list goes on, boys. It, it It's ridiculous. And every single team has a lineup that, of a bunch of stars. You you can name the Bulls. You can name the Pistons. There's so many great teams. The Celtics have just like, if you were a great player, you are on that roster. And I really thought that that's something that none of the other games have. And a lot of these other games like NBA Live, even your Maddens, take a big look at 2K every year of what they're doing. And they inquire that and put that into the game themselves. Back to well, you, bud. Well, um, I got to say what stood out to me the most when I heard about this game was open world. And like I said, you know, I'm an MMO player. And, you know, me and Clay, you know, we know open world means this. But, you know, this is an NBA game. What what open world? What does that mean? I was just kept wondering. And I'm looking at this, all the stuff you can do. Wow. So that really, really stood out to me. Other than you know, um, the career mode, like how you were telling me about that, is, that that was already awesome. But now you're telling me that NBA 2K is going open world. Man, you, you got to tell us about the open world, Dan. Uh, oh, oh, guys, when I first actually got it, I was I was looking at my girl and I was like, wait, they never do this for us. Like you, you like you, you can kind of go into your into your NBA court and, you know, shoot and have a couple NBA players over in the past games, but you've never actually got to get into a world. And like I walked, like I said, I walked in, it was like an NBA party. There was music playing and there was people everywhere. And like, you got to talk, you know, got to go up to different people and talk to them almost like in a Pokemon game, as you will, you know, like popping up to people, seeing what's up. And then you, you walk right up in there and you play the game. And I thought it was a, a, a different element that 
I, I think in the end, sports games are going to adapt because the fans want more. And, you know, we're already putting time into this and making a player like ourselves. You might as well let us, be, like, you know, rock the gear. And that's why I do think that the, the, the DLC content they have uh, with the um, – the upgrade with the, the Legend Edition, I think it's actually pretty cool because now that you're walking around and stuff, you can rock that Shaquille O'Neal ring and that jersey. It's pretty cool. <laughs> that sounds a lot like uh, Tony Hawk's Underground, the way that worked uh, when you had basically a story mode before you just went and skated all the all the different areas. So what you're saying there is that there's a story element to it, almost like a role playing or even like a like a second life type element to it before you play like the actual basketball games. Yes, yes, wow. you're wow. actually wow. walking around and you're, you're you got to walk to where you are. It's not just like it's not just like a regular game where it just starts like in the story mode. Like this is the first time ever, folks. This year, 2K18, you can walk into the court and talk to the guy and start playing. Oh, that's crazy. So that's it's like, wait, so it's like, uh, like one to five people, one to three people, something like that. Oh, the the game, the first, okay, so I'm not too much into it. I just got the game yesterday, and I just actually sat down and played the storyline for about an hour and 20 minutes tonight. You um you start in this little tournament. You walk up in there with your Jordan jersey on, and it's like all swag, everything. And you walk up in there, and you're, you know, you're kind of cocky. I think I'm the best. And you have to play, like, three matches, and then you get to go to this, like, um, if you're good enough, which I was, folks, you got to get into the top ten where they where they throw you into like the um, the best show. So you have to play, you know, uh, this top team. If you beat them, which we did, you got to uh, talk to an agent of the Bucks comes around the corner and is like, hey, I want to offer you a job, and you uh, you say, well, I don't have an agent. And he's like, well, I can't talk to you. So you go talk to this agent, you get signed, and then you go to this, uh, I'm, I'm up, up to the point where I get to play for the Bucks in the actual facility. And I started with the threes and I went to the twos, and now I'm playing against the ones. Okay, here's something I got to ask you, okay, right? So it's an open world game. So do you get, like, clans or guilds, like, you know, you and some friends? Um, you know what? I, I don't believe so right now. Um, I, I think that it is certain. Okay. So there's been a few parts. Well, obviously there, when I walked in, I walked to the person, I talked to them and then it went to the next scene. And then I walked in, like, I think it, it limits your ability to walk in except when you're in different parks or different open worlds as you will. But when I guess, I didn't see anything of those means when I was just uh, playing the game, but that's a really good point. That's a really awesome. I really like games like that. I think that the transition to something like that, in addition to having kind of like a quick play thing where you're just like, okay, you got your friends over, you just want to play a quick game real fast, I think that's really cool too. But, um, you know, we've been talking a little bit about this element, which actually brings up what's the storyline of the game, you know, where the, where does that, well, how does that happen? Okay. So last year was honestly the best storyline that I saw. I played 16 and I really did love that storyline, but this, they, they put a lot of time into it. It was like Kobe Bryant had his handprint and blueprint into this. And they actually went out and spent the money on Michael B. Jordan to be the actor. And it, he was like, your teammate and then you guys kind of went your separate ways and you guys argued and it was like you were the first pick and he was the second round pick and he always envied you kind of stuff and it was it was a really cool element that they brought to it and so this year when I popped it in the story mode I was really like what are they going to give me and at first you know and the thing I love about the story modes lately if you play them it pops off like a movie like you know any good game does it gives you this this certain vibe and this like the with the 2K presents and it even says your name like I put Debras and it's like Debras starring as DJ like it, it it's pretty cool with credits and everything and you walk in and you walk into this huge party like I said and it's it was a little different like 
the first time last year it was you were in high school and then it, it built you. This year it's you're like a street baller, as you will, somebody that kind of crashed and burned in college and was a DJ, and now you're trying to get back into the league. And I thought that was a very, very cool aspect that they brought to it because not everyone is that first or second round pick. Okay. I heard something I wanted to ask you. I didn't want to interrupt you while you was talking, but you're saying you put your name in and the announcers actually say your real name? Whatever you put Oh, in. no, 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 D. In the credits. In the credits. Oh, so, like, okay. if you put – okay, so in the beginning of the game, you – like, before you play the career and hit play and it starts, you put in your favorite team – which I didn't know, but I had a Milwaukee Bucks guy come up to me and want, want me to go to the team. But then you put in your name, and then the credits, like in the actual credits of it, it, it like it, it's set like in the words, your, your, your name comes up. So if we, if we put your name, Daryl Blackson, it comes right up just like that. <laughs> I don't think voiceovers have quite come that far yet where we've you know, got the opportunity. To, uh, Dude, that would be sweet. Wouldn't it though? That would be awesome. I think that'd be really cool. I'd, like, I'd love to see that in other games too, but you know, that's just never the same. Like that's why I could never bring myself to rename characters in like Final Fantasy games, just because of the fact that they would be saying you know one thing, and then it would appear on screen as something completely different. Yeah. And so speaking of some Final Fantasy and you know NBA 2K, it sounds like NBA 2K is a like an MMO or some RPG. So you mean you think? All sports games going to evolve like this? Yes, I, I agree that that is the next step in gaming for the sports because most people that, that, that do play the sports games play up play other games. I mean, if you've got a system, you just don't, like, no matter what else you play, you just don't play one sports game. You might play a couple other sports games, and there's always – that, that one or two games, if it's, you know, your Call of Duties to your Destinies to even like an Injustice 2 type game, a fighting style, people will play multiple games. Now, if you start throwing a couple other games together that, you know, we talked about before, that is really when, you know, people start loving it and the sales go through the roof because when you mix those style games with this, I mean... A player like me, when I saw this, I was just geeking, guys. I was just jumping up and down at the screen like, this is great. I can't believe it. Like, I was literally, like, like thrilling because I got to talk about it to you guys. But it's it, it's bigger than that. You can see that every year 2K is is the game for, for NBA that keeps pushing the envelope, and they're trying. And that's really half the battle is trying for your people. That's very true. That's very true. I mean, you always got to, you know, your your target audience, and you really got to push what they want, and what they like. And of course, people that have been playing games like 2K and uh, like in the, in the NFL games, they're all looking at this thing, looking for what they've known for years and years. And so that's actually really cool that they're trying to keep it to what they knew, while at the same time pushing something different. I'm I'm really actually very very excited about that. I mean, and I'm not one to play games like this, but this is actually sounding like something that more and more, like, I need to jump on and actually get into playing. Um, but speaking of that, let's talk about the online for a minute. Let's just talk about, you know, um, uh, player versus player, seeing, you know, just bringing your friends in, I mean, local, long this, I don't, I don't even know. Let's just talk about that. Okay, the, the PvP for this game is actually pretty cool. Very smooth when you're playing against um, someone online. Um, I didn't see very much delay on the shot. Now, every I swear, every game you play online, like we could talk about this for days about, you know, games you play and there's just a little delay. You always got to watch out for that with your shot. But see, with uh, when you're playing your buddy, there's there's no there there's not even a a fourth of a delay. You are completely um, full offense, full defense. It is pretty awesome. Um, I love playing online, and and I 
don't really see a problem with the way it is. You know, there's just some people you can see because of laggy internet that makes them a little bit laggy. But if you have a good service or, a, you know, a premium internet, as long as, you know, you're, you're getting it done in those regards, you won't have any problem with this. Um, I have played five games online so far and three games versus buddies in my house, and they went start to finish. I won all of them. I'm undefeated, folks. It's going down. Okay, I want to ask you something. Like what we talked about earlier about, you know, pay to win. So do you feel like, uh, you know, it's fair when you're playing, you know, in my park with your um your credit character and someone else has a credit character who is at a higher level? Or do we, the game has to get balanced? Um, it probably won't. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, if you're playing somebody else, and uh, and to what I know, I'm sure that it's not just one-on-one. You can play with other players and stuff because, you know, obviously you're on teams and the players come and, and you know, come and go. Um, the only way that you're going to be able to beat them is if you use the other players because, like, let's say that I'm a 70 and you're, like, a 90, you know, I'm I'm going to be trying to play you and and use, you know, use my team and who I have on my team because my, my 70 guy is just going to get ripped apart by a 90, you know. And and that's that 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 is a big point. I'm glad you brought that up because that's why, you know, we talk about I don't I just bought the regular game. I don't want all the special DLC. I would like the special jerseys, but, you know, you, you, you're getting a huge advantage on somebody that, you know, that just bought the game just like you. But they also paid the price for it. So, you know, I'm kind of – I'm in the middle on that one. You, bud? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, of course you're going to run into those issues, like you said, with, you know, people with different Internet connections and stuff like that. But, I mean, those – that's going to happen regardless. It really is. And uh, but so, but you're saying that it actually has a local multiplayer where you can play with your friends like in house. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That's very cool. You know, very few games are actually doing that still, which is really awesome when you do see it. So if it works out, hey, I mean, you know, more power to it. So what would you say are your your pros and cons, your likes and dislikes? Okay. Um, my likes is that this the game showed progression and that's what you want to see in a game like 2k those games that come out every single year and 2k has been one of the few sports games that it doesn't get old because they're always adding to stuff now i've always been a huge madden fan but don't get me started on madden they just they are the you should call it king green because all they do is recycle they recycle everything and now they're starting to pick up on what 2k is doing so they're so you know they they're kind of getting better because they're just watching the competition but 2k is the one that's always showing progress and giving us something new every year which it either the covers of who they got, the special content, and, you know, the things you can get from the new storyline. And the one thing I do love about 2K, um, this game updates about every three days. Now, they're like, and, and that's like full updates. I just don't mean like little things. I mean full rosters are updated like every three days, which in – some games, I know Madden, it was like every once a month it was updated. So that is a huge thing, and they keep updating more and more. I heard by next year they might have the uh, updates like every single day on rosters. So I think that that's awesome. 2K is showing that they are just keep progressing and getting better and better. Um, I, I think that this is the best one yet of this series. Okay, you gotta give us a scale, one to ten. What do you give it? Um, in a respectable gaming scale, because this is a sports game, and I don't want to take anything away from some of the great games that 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 have come before this one. I would give it a solid eight all day. Um, I I wouldn't give it a nine or a ten, but I also am not giving this game a seven. It wasn't mediocre. It was it was actually a very well put together game that they, you could tell they took a lot of time into it. Um, and I did appreciate this game and saw what they were trying to do for the fans and for um, 
video games as a whole to show you, you know, like, hey, if even if you're not into sports games, come check this game out and let's have some fun. You pretty well sold me on it. I'm actually seriously thinking about picking it up now. It sounds like an absolutely fantastic time. It really, really <laughs> does. Well, and like you, you, you asked about, a claim about if this game, you know, you can play this in house, dude. Like this is the one game where, still to this day, you get some buddies together and you can have tournaments. You can throw some money in, get some food, and like, like we we host a tournament about once a year just to have at my crib with some buddies. You know, have some beers, have some food, have a good time. Like, it, it's one of those things where 2K, you, it, it's always going to be an in house game too. Plus, you know, like like the the online content is kind of unreal with, you know, how many games you can play in a day, you know, and just keep pushing them out. But in-house is just, it, it's the best. And you also don't have to, um, you see, with, you know, with some of these other games, there's split screens, there's weird stuff that goes on with this game. There's no split screen. You play the same screen. And that's why I think 2K will always have a, a, a platform to play in your household. That sounds like an old school land party. What we used to do with games like Halo and stuff. That is actually yeah. really awesome. I love it. Well, guys, that's going to do it for tonight's discussion on NBA 2K18. We really hope you've heard something that you enjoyed. That you'll go check the game out. And of course, I mean, don't take our word for it, guys. Go out, take a look at it, take a look at all the things, watch some videos online if you have to, and. Um, just take a look. It sounds like a really awesome game. Dan, thank you so much for bringing all the info on that. Problem, buddy. Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, there's that part of the show where we call Coming Up. Now, of course, that means new games and new DLC coming up that we're excited about. Daryl, let's start with you, man. What's your picks for this week? Shadow of War. Okay? I choose this game because a lot of my buddies have told me about Shadow of War, and I've never played it. And I love games like this. So I am definitely um, looking to Shadow of War. All right. Shadow of War is coming up very soon, actually coming out in October. So, guys, stay tuned to that. Dan, what's your pick for this week? Okay. I got a couple. I got a shout-out to that new South Park, the fractured but whole. Okay? So this game sounds pretty funny. It sounds hilarious. I, I, I've actually had the chance to play the Stick of Truth, and this game is – it is stupid funny, guys. I was laughing the whole time through it, and, you know, it, it's always a good time when South Park comes out with a game, no matter, you know, if you like the show or not. Um, it, it's, just, it's, it's funny, and it's good for games, to, you know, for that genre, for, for people that, you know, want to have a laugh while they game. You know, there's not a, a very big category of games like this. Um, the other game that I... I'm kind of excited for it, but I know my family and my son is super excited for Just Dance 2018 to come out, and they have a little bit of everybody. I'm actually looking at the track list right now, and they have from anyone from Lil Wayne, Ariana Grande, Bruno Mars, Nicki Minaj. Um, they got the, the Louis Fonzie that sings that Despacito song. They got pretty much everything on here, you know, more pop music, hip-hop music, but it, it's a very fun game. It's kind of a way to be active and game at the same time. And, you know, we always got to show love to those, um, those games that just keep coming out, you know, and they're guaranteed to come out because they have the fan bases, you know. So shout out Just Dance. Absolutely, absolutely. So, guys, my picks for the day are actually Fallout 4, which comes out next week, which uh, is the Fallout 4 Game of the Year edition. So, of course, you know it's going to come out with all this DLC. And if you guys are Fallout 4, you know how much fun it is. You know what kind of enjoyable game it is, except for you guys who really hated the dog. And I can understand completely. Oh, my God, well, that dog would run into a room full of traps. Thank you very much for getting me killed. Appreciate that. And... <laughs> Out just this week is a re-release of Final Fantasy IX on the PlayStation. Ooh. Yeah, the remastered edition has come out. It snuck up on us. I didn't even see it pop up. If you wow. Are, if any Final Fantasy fans that I know, they absolutely adored that game. Guys, go check it out because it really was a lot of fun. It was a very, very... Very interesting Final Fantasy title, and I think you guys will really enjoy it. But that's going to do it for us, ladies and gentlemen. So, of course, we're going to wrap it up with interviewing our guest. Dan, where can we find you, my friend? 
You can find me, folks, on YouTube at the Fan Club. A lot of cool things happening there. Also, find me on Facebook at the Fan Club. TFC 563, also DBROZ, and find me at Press Play Entertainment. Daryl, how about you, man? Well, you can always find me on the Phantom Group um, Facebook page. We got a lot of new things coming up, so stay tuned to the page and find out. And of course, you can find me on the Inferno Share Play. And ladies and gentlemen, you know who I am. Clay from Tales of the Blade. You can find me on H. Facebook.com slash Tales of the Blade, also YouTube.com slash Tales of the Blade. You can also find me on the Phantoms Anonymous page where we have discussions every single day. If you don't know who we are, we are Phantoms Anonymous. That's F-A-N-D-O-M-S-A-N-O-N-Y-M-O-U-S. We're all over social media. You can check us out on Twitter at, at Anonymous underscore Fan17. Check out the new uh, logo design. Tell us what you guys think. Come over to the Facebook page. Join in the discussions that we have every single day, and it's just a whole lot of fun. You guys are missing out if you're not there. Come on by, and as always, you know how we do. If there's anything else, we'll see you next time, and have a good one. Phantoms Anonymous.